world it's your boy ego and i'm back with some more boxing make sure you smash the like button also subscribe to the channel for more boxing now i made a, a ton of videos about this subject matter kell brook his mandatory is errol spence jr four weeks ago kell brook back in the gym after the golovkin ko and he had a surgery on his eye errol spence reminds injured kell brook 10 days and then most recently i did this video kell brook approved 60 more days to avoid errol spence jr and that video apparently rubbed some people the wrong way, but I stand by what I said in that video. Kell Brook, very talented fighter. I told you guys that I believe, personally, him jumping up, daring to be great, didn't make sense to fight Golovkin. The most powerful uh, middleweight, and you're going to do that. And now it sounds like he's coming to his senses, saying he might even stay at welterweight. Shout out to ESPN link in the description they did a good article slash interview with him and make sure you guys check that out again link in the description kel brook was talking about pacquiao versus vargas given his input he thinks pacquiao like most of us will beat vargas he thinks vargas can he's tough durable and that's a guy he was slated to fight before he went on to fight against gennady golovkin but either way he says vargas can trouble pacquiao a bit but ultimately pacquiao doesn't win on a knockout he thinks pacquiao will win on points because pacquiao hasn't had a knockout in quite some time so that's definitely a fair prediction if vargas were to win it would be considered an upset now he also talked about the welterweight division and he says he's on a search for the big fights he says and i quote i'm after the biggest and best fights out there those are the ones that are going to get me up for it once you have become a world champion, you need special fights to keep you motivated in training. A world title fight unification would do that, right? Thing I already have a problem with is, and then he also talks about how he got backlash for fighting certain people and he stepped up and fought Golovkin, but I told you guys that was kind of a win-win situation. All they have to do is show a good skill set, lose like he ultimately did do, and it's not the same as losing to Danny Garcia, Kell Brook, Keith Thurman. If you lose to someone that's your size, that's a fair fight all the way around. They're in your division, they're your size, they're a puncher in your division. You move up, then people will have a built-in scapegoat or excuse to lose because you were expected to lose. You know what I mean? If a light heavyweight moved up and said, hey, I'm fighting prime Mike Tyson, people would just be like, damn, he has some stones. He's fighting Mike Tyson. And I'm not saying Golovkin's Tyson, but he's the number one middleweight most people consider him if you have a brain you'll say until otherwise proven he's the number one middleweight right now not of all time or nothing but right now so it was really a win-win situation you show show face and um show your game and that you have a skill set maybe problem create problems for the lufkin and spots lose and then people are like okay he at least fought somebody and that, that relieves the the tension stops the bleeding for a bit so the thing I have a problem with what he's saying is that doesn't change the fact that after Sean Porter, you started fighting a bunch of mandatories. The first one was acceptable. You had a leg injury, you were stabbed, you didn't know if you'd be able to walk again. So yeah, take your mandatory, a guy you should easily beat like Jojo Dan. But then why did Frankie Gavin come into play? He wasn't a mandatory to my knowledge and he's still losing to this day to other people. He just lost a fight recently. And then Kevin Bezier, you're supposed to fight Diego Chavez. I was cool with the Chavez fight because Diego Chavez can crack and he's, he's a good boxer. But, I mean, Bezier, we all knew the foregone conclusion. So, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that you had those fights. So, to me, Kell Brook saying this, oh, it takes mega fights to get up for training or whatever. It's just like, why were you fighting BZAs? Because a lot of you guys don't know shit about boxing. When it comes to mandatories, yes, you have to have your title defenses in by a certain time, but you see it time and time again, rules are bent and people like Tyson Fury, no one knew, obviously barring the, the cocaine, no one knew that he was going to test positive, but he hadn't fought Klitschko or anybody in a year. It was, it was about to be a year. They had postponements and all types of stuff. So if he didn't fill the drug test, his title defense slash rematch with Klitschko would have nearly taken a place within a year. So I know for a fact, Kell Brook, he didn't have to fight Jojo Dan, Frankie Gavin, and then Kevin Bezier in that particular order. You can also, just like he got a 60-day extension 
for medical reasons, which I talked about in this video, he could he could say, hey, I took care of Jojo Dan, and instead of fighting Frankie Gavin, who's not even my mandatory, I want to fight Keith Thurman. And they probably, if you put in a written request, they would have done that. Or if he was like, I want to rematch Sean Porter or fight someone tougher, it probably would have been approved because he at least fought Jojo Dan. He didn't have to fight that. So it still doesn't justify that. I don't care what he or Eddie Hearn or anybody tries to say. It doesn't justify those string of fights since Sean Porter. From Sean Porter to Golovkin, those fights in the middle weren't really anything that would pose a challenge where people thought he had a shot of losing. You know what I'm saying? Kell Brook is a good fighter. That's, that's why we want to see him tested and see him in meaningful fights because he is a good fighter and he's a big welterweight but anyway he says he might stay at welterweight my weight has settled down so i can still make welterweight i've got spence on the horizon and there's the likes of wbc champion danny garcia and amir khan as well but i don't know yet the eye socket is healing well but i still have some stitches in my mouth where they went into my cheek during the operation looking forward to getting back in the gym and seeing what direction i'm headed in next i need to make sure my eye is 100 percent again Check ESPN for the full article and interview. So he might stay at welterweight. And this is the other thing I'm not understanding. He's talking like Errol Spence is on the horizon. He's not on the horizon. He's at the front door. You know what I mean? He's been through all the tests. So again, for me, Kell Brook, this fight really didn't need to happen with Golovkin. It, it just kind of blemished his record. I mean, he did good in spots, but ultimately you lost. And now you're no longer undefeated. And now you're talking about staying at that weight. So I think that's a good idea because the 154 has killers. 154 has a ton of killers. You know what I'm saying? Demetrius, Andre. And see, this is the thing. I met a lot of 154 pounders that are current champions. Demetrius, Andre. Got the sparring footage with him. And I'm a, I'm a big dude myself. Demetrius, Andre, he's, he's tall. He's definitely tall. He's like six. I would say six one, six foot. He, he's up there, right? And the Charlo brother, same deal. They're both big. So Kell Brook, I don't know his act, actual height. I think he might be lifted, listed at like 5'9", five, 5'9 nine, five, nine and a half. But these guys are all big. You know what I'm saying? These are these are some pretty big guys at the 154. And a lot of them are champions or skilled. Even the Canelo fight's dangerous. So I understand Kell Brook wants a big fight and a big money fight. But I think welterweight is really where he should be right now. If you could still make the weight, then why force the issue? And you know what I mean? Because he was saying interviews for the Golovkin thing. He was eating up. He was just eating whatever he wants. So just use a little bit more discipline. Maybe eat some chicken or fish instead of that steak. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But realistically, I don't understand why Kell Brook is talking about fighting the Pacquiao Vargas winner and Amir Khan when he has the mandatory. So that's another thing I had a problem with. And see, just to clarify in this initial video, because some of you guys were heated, like, oh, let him heal, ego, 60 days to heal. No, this is 60 days to prolong the negotiations. At the end of August, or excuse me, at the end of October, I think October 26, he was supposed to have decided what he wanted to do if he's coming back to welterweight to fight Errol Spence Jr. Both camps were supposed to have to negotiated that. If they did not negotiate at October 26th, 27th, that deadline, then it would go to a purse bid. And if the purse bid, whoever wins the fight, if Kell Brooks said, I'm not fighting Errol Spence, then he would get stripped and lose his belt. That is the policy, right? That is what would be enforced. So it's not 60 days. I'm not expecting Kell Brook to fight within the next 60 days. This is merely to negotiate. Again, a lot of you guys don't know shit about boxing. You don't know what you're talking about. You're like, let him heal. He's just coming off an eye injury. That's fine. The eye injury is not a problem. I'm not talking about Errol Spence and Kell Brook need to fight within 60 days. This was 60 days pushing back the negotiation slash purse bid. It was supposed to go to the next chapter of what would happen if the two camps couldn't agree on the fight. It was supposed to go to a purse bid, but he bought himself extra time, gave himself an extra 60 days by submitting him and his team, submitting a written request to the IBF, which they approved to even negotiate the fight. You can be injured and negotiate a fight because more than likely, guess what? Fighters aren't the ones that are negotiating the fight. It's your team. It's Eddie Hearn. It's your advisor. It's your promoter. It's the people you have surrounding you that are negotiating the particulars of the fight and 
Eddie Hearn would probably say, oh, hey, here's a piece of paper. They want to do USADA drug testing. This is the purse split. This is the venue. This is the day. You know what I mean? And they kind of bring that to you. It's like a restaurant. They, it's like they bring you a menu and then you decide, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good or whatever. But Kell Brook. So realistically, the 60 day extension, it's not about fighting. It's about negotiating. And Kell Brook is not the one negotiating. Eddie Hearn's eye is not messed up. So he can negotiate with Al Heyman or whoever Errol Spence's direct person is or Watson or whoever, I don't know. He can negotiate the fight with them, but the fact is they pushed it out and that's just a fact. It's a fact. They pushed the negotiation out. So, hey, we got 60 days. We don't have to worry about it. I've done that with my taxes before, like where you're like, oh man, I don't, I don't feel like doing my taxes right now. So you, you get the turbo tax and then you push it out. You get the tax extension. You're like, okay, cool. I bought myself some time. Now I can do all this other stuff and, and, and I don't have to meet this date deadline of April or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they did. And to me, I the thing that's I don't like about that is it's we've been waiting a long time for Errol Spence to get this shot and a good fight with with Kell Brook since Sean Porter and a good fight that a lot of people think he can win and that's the Errol Spence Jr. fight that's a toss-up fight it's a pick em fight Golovkin most people were picking against him I even look seven reasons Gennady Golovkin beats Kell Brook I, I told you I mean I, this was an easy fight to predict now Errol Spence versus Kell Brook that's a that's a good fight that's a good ass fight. Errol Spence doesn't have the pro level resume or experience, especially since Kell Brook has now faced a guy like Golovkin and also faced Sean Porter. Spence don't have those names. Some people say he gets hit too much, so it's a good fight. That's why I want to see it because let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's cut the fat and get to some of these good matches. And to me, it doesn't make sense for Kell Brook to even be speaking on Pacquiao Vargas winner and Amir Khan, Danny Garcia, when your mandatory is right there. You were fighting all of your mandatories in a row. You know what I'm saying? So why are we talking about non-mandatories when your mandatory happens to be a really good fight, which is Errol Spence Jr.? You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, Danny Garcia is already fighting Keith Thurman. So that's not going to be in the near foreseeable future. We don't know what, what happens with Pacquiao Vargas. That, that's happening this week. So... Um, I'm just about the good fights. I want to see good fights. And Kell Brook's definitely a good fighter. I want to see the Errol Spence Jr. fight. They bought themselves some time. It is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Kell Brook said he might go back to wel welterweight. He thinks he can manage and make welterweight, which is good. Because 54, there's some sharks up there. And obviously, middleweight is not his deal right now. Because he got stopped. And he got an eye injury and a severe injury that he's never received when he was fighting in lighter divisions let me know what you guys think kel brooks saying he might stay at wealth the way he has to see still recovering drop it in the comment section share the video like the video as always hey comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing up